Excuse me. Pardon. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Summoner's Rift. Whoa there, Traveller. Did you really think we'd just hop into a ranked game of League of Legends without a little course prior to? You were sorely mistaken. There's a couple house cleaning items we need to get off the plate real quick. So let's dive into those. Alright, I don't know who that British guy was, but I'm Sean, and I'm the one making this project. So, first and foremost, I think we should go over some key concepts in League of Legends. These concepts are 1. Runes 2. Gold and EXP 3. Summoners and 4. My sweet boy First, let's talk about runes. Runes act as a means for each player to decide how they want to go about playing the game before they even load onto the rift. There are different types of runes, and each type caters to a different style of gameplay. We have precision, which does well catering towards bruisers or people who have sustained damage over time. Domination, more for champions who intend to do their damage in small bursts. Sorcery, which aids heavily in poke damage often applied by mages. Resolve, which gives tanks a means of incorporating damage into their kit, or simply just getting even tankier. And lastly, Inspiration, sort of like a wild card. Now, you're going to hear an explanation from me explaining why I chose each of the runes that I did for this game. So this is going to be my final rune setup heading into this game. I decided to go with Grass of the Undying. It is what I'm most comfortable playing on Orn with. I actually don't know if I've ever really ventured off of it aside from maybe a game here or there. Uh, it's a really strong rune. It gives me the ability to heal a little bit more, deal a little bit more damage, and also kind of just give pressure in lane. Whenever I have that grass proc available, the opponent kind of just feels the need to back off a little bit. On top of that, I choose to go for Demolish in case I ever do get a lead in this lane. I'm going to be able to push it really hard. Contradictory to that, I also love going Conditioning in case I fall behind in the lane. It gives me a nice safety blanket that would give me some opportunities to come back in the game post 12 minutes. Next, I always like to go over growth. I contemplated unflinching, especially considering the game had a Thresh, a Talia, a Cho'Gath, and a Viego, all with different forms of CC. But you can't go wrong with overgrowth. If I want to push a lead, if I get a lead, if I want to just sit topside and live on my island like a good top laner usually does, overgrowth is always the way to go. My secondary, I choose inspiration. I decide to go with biscuit delivery and magical footwear. Biscuit delivery just gives me an extra little bit of sustain in lane. It actually comes in great handy in this game, and I'll, you'll see that a little bit later on. And then magical footwear... I don't want to buy boots, that's 300 gold that I don't have to spend. Sure, they get to me a little bit late, but I'm never really going to need that movement speed. Plus, it's going to give me a little extra movement speed later down the line with its passive. Next, we're going to hop on over to gold and EXP. These two things are just about as important in League of Legends as they are in any other MOBA, as they provide a means for players in that game to get stronger and thus carry it, or get weaker since they're not staying up to pace, and therefore throw it. 
Gold and EXP in League of Legends are primarily acquired through killing minions. Experience points can be earned simply by standing close enough to an enemy wave that is dying. However, in order to secure gold in League of Legends, you must deal the killing blow to a minion, otherwise known as last hitting it. There are other means of securing gold in League, such as killing an enemy champion. However, that's definitely not always going to happen, and as such, killing minions is the primary means of securing both of these resources. Now, let's talk about summoners. Summoners in League of Legends, similar to runes, are something that a player will choose prior to entering the rift. There are a variety of these in League of Legends, however we're only going to focus on two of them today, the ones that I and my laning opponent both chose. The summoners we both picked were Flash and Teleport. Flash is the quintessential summoner in League of Legends. It is picked in almost every single game by every single character, simply due to its versatility. Whether they're trying to work themselves deeper into a fight or get the heck out of there, Flash provides them a means to instantly transmit themselves into the position that they choose. The other summoner we both chose, Teleport, allows the user to, well, teleport to any friendly structure on the map. Whether it be a ward, a minion, or a tower, it'll get you there. However, this feature of the summoner spell does not unlock until after 10 minutes of in-game time, since prior to, the user is only allowed to teleport to one of their friendly turrets. The fourth and final topic we'll need to touch on before we hop into our game is... My sweet boy. Oh, my sweet, sweet boy. I love this guy. Let me tell you what, I've referenced him numerous times already. You've seen pictures of him over and over again throughout the start of this presentation. If there's one thing you gotta know about me, I'm a bit of a fluttershy. I'm a little bit of a Pinkie Pie, Twilight Sparkle. I'm a Rainbow Dash. I'm a one trick pony. And the name of my pony is Orin, Freliordian God, Brother of Volibear, Master of Blacksmithing. Master of all! Don't believe me? Listen to LS himself say so. It's because Orn, the mage, death knight, paladin, hunter, rogue, warrior, enchanter, <laughs> tank, bruiser, wizard, warlock, priest, assassin, gunslinger, druid, shaman, necromancer, ninja, gunslinger, bard, monk, robot, conjurer, blacksmith, <laughs> mystic, warden, god, illusionist, templar, wizard. Yeah. So, as you can hear, my boy's pretty versatile, and you're gonna be able to see some of that on display in this upcoming gameplay footage. Let's hop into it. So I'm in the top lane. Uh, it's this one as described in my essay paper. Uh, I'm going to be walking all the way up north. My teammate brings up a good point, most likely getting invaded. That invade should come over towards the bot side, so I'm pretty fine. I'm just going to be uh, making sure that nothing happens over here on this side, making sure that no one walks up here or here and gets a free ward that I don't really want them having. Uh, my Hui is in the mid lane, this is the mid lane, my bot lane is Senna, Jin, they're going to be down here, they're on the complete opposite side of the map for me. It takes me a really long time to walk down there, that is why I took this summoner spell, it is a teleport, after 4 seconds of channeling I'm going to be able to teleport to an allied structure, it unleashes at 10 minutes in, it gives me a little bit more things I can teleport to, like wards, minions, or structures. Wards are going to be this, this little stealth ward thing that I have, or control wards in my shop that I might hopefully be purchasing if I'm actually learning how to play the game a little bit well. Uh, my teammates apparently are very interesting humans. That is often the case, so I'm not going to mute them. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a modern day... Okay, so real quick, we're going to cut away from this in-game commentary over to some post-analysis that I did of this upcoming sequence. First wave just arrived and Cho'Gath and me are going to be fighting in order to make sure that we can secure CS. You see me just auto attacking the wave, getting priority over the minions that are pushed up on his end. He's going to be doing the same thing on his end as well. He presses his E ability which I now know he leveled up level 1. It's going to give him empowered auto attack so I was forced to run away there. In my attempt to run back in I actually do get hit by his grass of the undying proc which was bad on my end. but stuff happens especially when you're not thinking that um well and you're trying to focus on mechanics here he just got two and so did i he misses his q which gives me the ability to level up my w and then hit him with a brittle proc i see that he's using a health pot so i feel free to use mine we're in a pretty even trading state he just knocked me up with his q and i thought i was good here but after missing my w i'm forced to run away here i have to flash his q and i choose to go in 
after choosing to go in I get a really good amount of damage off so he's actually forced to back away I chase in hope that I can get my fire breath to kill him just not the edge of it but I knew that was never really gonna be the case it was just a hope he has 10 more base movement speed than me so it's difficult now I kind of just have security over this lane. It's pushed towards my side. He shouldn't have any vision of my grave, so him pushing up feels really dangerous. So he's going to opt to take back here, and I already assume that. So I'm just going to try and maintain a really good uh, wave management position and keep these minions on my side of the river. As you can see, I'm just CSing as adequately as I possibly can, securing what minions I can, and keeping what minions out from underneath my turret I can. Now we see him arrive back in lane. He's at full HP compared to my 300 HP, so he has a massive advantage, but I get to abuse the fact that I have a tower next to me. He's still, with his wave, pushed up to me. We're even on minions right now after I just cleared that. Actually, here I'm going to take a and build some items under turret. I stop building Ruby Crystal and opt for Null Magic Mantle knowing that he has Doran's Ring, so I can just have higher magic resistance. I ping for my graves. And to come to this lane. I thought I was setting myself up for a knockup on the E there, but I actually didn't have enough mana and I didn't notice that. However, it doesn't necessarily matter because this grave's just gonna get a free kill. As we know from that trading pattern earlier, this Chugath did not have flash, so it was always gonna be free for this graves to come in so long as he actually hit his abilities. Alright now we're actually gonna cut away to when that Chogath arrives back in lane to some post commentary on that. As you can see, I have a freeze frame set up. This is directly after that Cho'Gath's death that he just had against the Graves who ganked the lane. He didn't have TP as he was forced to use it earlier or felt forced to use it earlier, so he had to walk that entire distance back into the lane. What you're about to see is a really important thing in League of Legends involving level discrepancy and proper itemization. This Cho'Gath upon going back to base via death actually decided to purchase a ruby crystal with his gold that he garnered throughout the laning phase he started doran's ring and he purchased a ruby crystal so he gained no extra ability power and instead chose to gain some health in doing so my null magic mantle is only made that much stronger against him and the magic resistance that i have which at this point is 60 is going to feel very suffocating for him if he goes for something like an all-in that in unison with the biscuit that i have in my inventory is going to give me a lot of sustain especially if i happen to get something like a grass of the undying proc off what you're about to see is exactly that happening. He is going to do something that you should never really do, and that is force when you don't need to force. I, granted, have the level and TP advantage, so maybe he wants to kill me to such a degree that he feels his movements and decision making is necessary. However, it is not, and we're about to watch that unfold. Oh no. Yeah, so what I've done here is I've kind of just messed him up pretty bad. He has no means of ever returning and getting a good lead back in this lane. So I'm actually going to shift my build path a little bit. And then just E away there. We're actually just going to get that proc off as well, get that. We're going to take that, mess with him a little bit in that sense. I think he just inted. Yeah, he did. It's not like I even played that well. He just played it terribly. He's going to blame pathing. He should just be clicking more. Whee! Whee! Okay, so he's going to get a pretty good wave state here. I would love to crash it, but I just don't have the means of doing so. I'm actually going to build Bami Cinder, like I said I would. Uh, and then I'm gonna go rejuve bead. Yeah, I'm gonna go rejuve bead. That seems pretty fine. I'm missing out on a minion here, but it's fine. I'm up on CS. I should be much more up on CS, especially given how terrible he's playing. But, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. I really don't want him being able to secure this CS, so I'm actually gonna pressure him off of it. And then I'm gonna bump that. Sadly, he was not in range of me there. I know what his flash timer is because he flashed at the like, same amount of time as I did, at the same distance in time as I did rather. He flashed at the same time, I don't know what I'm saying in terms of all that jazz. But since I know that, I also know that he just hit 5 so I'm not worried about him getting level 6 off this wave, when normally I might be. 
That's a fun little brutal plaque for me right there. So he's going to step up to secure some of this wave, and then I'm just going to ult him. I know what he wants. I feel like he's looking for a Viego gank. I know he's not going to get it. So off of that minion, I just reached level 7. This Chirgath is still level 5. I don't know his exact EXP, EXP count, but I'm assuming that this wave pushing into him is going to help him get where he needs. So I am already fully mentally committed to wanting to tower dive him here. The advantage that I have is immense. I have Bami Cinder, I have Rejuve Beat, I have no Magic Mantle, I have a Biscuit. The only thing he has on me is these boots. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to see how it works out. And then after the fact, I'm going to explain what I did wrong and then what I did right. Okay, so now because this is happening, I feel the need to ult there. I'm going to go forward, I'm going to attack, and then I'm just going to walk away. Woohoo! That worked out good, right? He died, right? That was a good turret dive. It worked out, right? Wrong. He was a horrible turret dive. I did a couple things wrong there, and I'm only going to mention two of them because they're the keynotes. Uh, first and foremost, I have no idea where enemy jungler is. I did that thing completely blind. He could have been on Krugs, half a step away from topside. If he's there, I definitely die. Maybe the Cho'Gath lives, and this Cho'Gath's going to find his way back into the game. Secondly, did you see how close I was to getting hit by that Cho'Gath Q? The second proc of my R is the only thing that saved me, and honestly, if you look at it frame by frame, I probably should have gotten knocked up by it. And the second that I do, I'm dead, which once again allows this Cho'Gath back into the game. So all in all, even though it was successful and I got what I wanted and I didn't die, the amount of risk that I took in doing the play was absolutely abysmal. If Viego was up top, there's a good chance that I'd die here. My waves crashed. I feel really confident stepping up and making that play. If it's a misplay, it's perfectly fine. I am far ahead in the lane, like I said. Uh, it's not like that kill secures a lot for me. It's more of what it takes away from him that I'm going for. Uh, Cho'Gath is a champion that really relies on his stacks that he gets from his ultimate to progress in the game, especially when he falls behind early. Uh, he has boots on me, which gives him more movement speed, so I really have to abuse the CC that's in my kit in order to do anything. So all I want to do is kind of prevent him to, from getting 6 while I can. He's going to probably get it right now. He just ate a minion the second that he came back to lane. I saw him, so I know that I have another like minute of grass I can put off on him. Uh, he really doesn't want to be pushed up into me, and I know that, so... Bye-bye. Another little one of that. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of just play this as good as I can. So my Graves is kind of pushing up a lot quicker than I would have liked him to. He has Flash. I know he has Flash, so I don't like this. Just back off. I didn't really need a gank there. One bit. It, it's kind of counterintuitive. He should probably just be taking grubs, if anything. We're just going to call him missing on our Cho'Gath because I don't know where he is. I have to unplug my mouse. It's, it's causing me some issues. Uh, the way he's playing after just playing back makes me think that Viego's up top, so I just have to be aware of that. I don't care if I get hit by that, I actually kind of want to. Okay, I feel like this is where I play. I should have predicted that, I knew that he had flash. It's completely my fault. I actually really want to get Demolish proc off here. I have bombies though. So we have to make sure we get away. Yeah, it's good by me. I usually don't like building this item. They have a Talia though. And I'm versus the Shogath. So it's fine. So what I want to do here is I really want to fast push this wave, hopefully deny him some of that. I just saw that Viego took Void Grubs, so he's on top side. I know that. He's literally right there. Uh, I'm just going to act like I'm playing really far back now. He should ward this bush or this bush. He should not have any idea that I'm in this bush. 
I'm gonna walk out. I actually have no idea where he's playing from. His TP should be back up from what I remember. I TP'd much later than him in this lane. I also have a flash advantage right now. So there we go there. And then I'm gonna step down, I'm gonna ward here. It's just the right play to make. He's getting denied some CS here. I really just want to be able to secure this demolish proc real quick. It's all I ever want in my life is some demolish procs. I'm just going to step back and we're going to build another mill magic mantle. He's really going for this. I have my ult in 12 seconds. He's stepping up when he shouldn't be. He's not allowed to step up. He knows that. I know that. Okay, so maybe he is allowed to step up. I have TP in a few seconds. I really kind of need to go Bramble Vest right now, now that I realize it. I'm playing this very well. And now look at him, now look at him. So what I'm actually gonna do here, I'm gonna get 10. Uh, that pathing was terrible. I'm hoping to take this really slow. I want this, yes. I want this cannon minion to perish here. So he's actually TPing back in here. Well, he's probably gonna wanna eat cannon if anything. Yeah, he eats cannon, it's expected. I, I, I'm unsure how, why he's playing this right like this right now. I'm in a pretty decent position. I know he knows that, I know I know that. He's kind of just allowing me to play this exactly how I want to play this. I want to play this. And then just run away. Q so I get some ability to move. And now I'm just going to base real quick. I'm going to base and then I'm going to build Bramble instead of finishing my boots. Because it's a little bit more important in my eyes. I'll also buy a control ward while I'm at it. And then I'll start my TP. Immediately, if yeah, if he would have stayed up, I would have immediately ulted there. And I'm glad he realized that, because getting a free kill like that is never how I really want to play the game, to be honest. I just saw him go over there. That was the wrong button on my behalf. I tried to press the wrong button, and it's genius. Now, I kind of just want her ass. There we go. Good, 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 good. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't realize how quickly that one minion was dying. That cannon. Terrible on my behalf. I know that this guy just used his TP, though. So I'm doing perfect. And this turret plating is about to fall in 30 seconds. So there's actually a high likelihood that I can take this tower. He doesn't have TP. He respawns in 5 seconds. I see Viego taking Dragon on minimap with Talia down there as well. I'm going to be able to take this. He literally just respawned. He has boots. He's going to upgrade them so he gets there a little bit faster. But he's not actually going to be able to get here too fast. This turret plane is going to fall in 10 seconds. I'm just going to keep, 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 keep on hitting. Real quick, I'm also just going to take this wave. Just keep, 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 keep on hitting. You're going to step back a little bit here so you don't grab turret aggro. Just keep up the pressure, man. All I need to do, just keep up pressure. He thinks that he has me here. I literally know that he doesn't is the issue. I know he has nothing on me here. I have so much pressure on him. And now he had to flash. He had to flash after just a simple trading pattern. And I'm just going to hit him with a little dancey dance because I know how he is. And I want him to back. I want him to back. It's going to give me an advantage. Luckily, I got that. And hopefully, Demolish is back up. Yeah, Demolish is back up. I don't see Viego walking up my topside river right here. Now, I just get to back up. And just, I, take it, I take a greedy back. I take a really greedy back, and I'm going to be fine. Now, there's some circumstances where you should just roam the map after this circumstance. Um, 
after like what has happened in this lane how it went but this is not one of those times i really want to push my advantage really choke this chogath out i want to play on this island that is the top lane i'm gonna walk back because i don't have tp he's gonna complain about a jungle dip his jungler is four zero he's zero and four uh, I mean, 4, 1, and 2. He's 0 and 4. Uh, I really need to build another MR item. So after this, I'm going to be going Jack Show, which is an MR and a blah, blah, item. He's a big old crybaby. You see a lot of those in League of Legends. I'm one of them, to be honest. So Yeah, so you see this cannon minion here? That's all I want to deny from him. That's all I care about is this cannon minion. If I can deny him the the gold from it the exp from it anything about it it's just so suffocating as this chogath to have a person playing who knows what they're doing and i'm just gonna pull this back now i'm gonna pull it forward and then i'm just gonna ping the missing on him because he's missing he's not on the game anymore now having this canyon minions uptime is immense for me I'm just going to punch it, and I'm going to punch this. We're really freezing up this wave. We're kind of breaking this freeze, but he's allowing it to... I'm allowing it to be a thing. And now I'm just going to harass the, the out of him. I'm just going to keep beating him up. He's a, he's a good Cho'Gath player, I'll admit it. He knows what he's doing. I'm just going to keep pushing my advantage, though. Because I'm a better Orn player than he is a Cho'Gath player. It's just plain and simple. And also, I have the advantage. Now we're going to start jumping around a little bit, one, to keep it within the 30 minute time constraint that we have for this project, and two, just because I spend the next few minutes in top lane and this gameplay gets a little bit boring, aside from just the team fights that we start having. Also, kind of a, just a side note, in case you didn't see that scoreboard I pulled up earlier, this Talia and Viego are both kind of fed and my team's not doing all the best, I'm like the only one who's really with an advantage, so we're in for a doozy. I have no idea what this Tali is doing. If I had my ult, she's dead. Every single time. There you go. What is happening? I get to leave. I'm a boy. you doing it's just so bad man that's so good <laughs> it 
And that's when we were choo choo in the chat, baby. No, just keep it going. Just keep it going. We have nothing else we can do this game. We have Elder for right now. It's it, it this is it. This is the push. this is the push. There we go, baby. GG. What a game. What a game, man. Oh my goodness, what a game.